Jesus told us to keep on praying and not to lose heart. Into this world of challenge and change, this service seeks to offer encouragement and hope. A new ministry has begun. A ministry of service and leadership, of prayer and proclamation. Even though this ministry begins today in a digital environment, it will be earthed in the world that Christ came to save. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably upon your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, and by the tranquil operation of your perpetual providence, carry out the work of our salvation, and let the whole world feel and see that things which were cast down are being raised up, and those things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are returning into unity, through him by whom all things were made, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard. On the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Bishop Goodley, my dear sister in Christ, it has pleased God to call you to be the shepherd and chief pastor of the Diocese of Chelmsford. I'm sure that long before now you have laid to heart the high trust and weighty obligations of this office. But in order that we may know your commitment to fulfill this trust, I remind you of those things given at your consecration and call upon you to reaffirm the promises that you made when you were ordained and consecrated a bishop. Bishops are called to lead in serving and caring for the people of God and to work with them in the oversight of the church. As chief pastors, they share with their fellow bishops a special responsibility to maintain and further the unity of the church, to uphold its discipline and to guard its faith. They are to promote its, mi its mission throughout the diocese. It is their duty to watch over and pray for all those committed to their charge 
and to speak and govern them after the example of the apostles, speaking in the name of God and interpreting the gospel of Christ. They are to know their people and be known by them. They are to ordain and send out new ministers, guiding those who serve with them and enabling them to fulfill their ministry. Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to uphold the truth of the gospel against error? By the help of God, I will. Will you strive to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ? By the help of God, I will. Will you promote unity, peace and love among all Christian people and especially among those whom you serve? By the help of God, I will. Will you then be a faithful witness to Christ, to those among whom you live, and lead your people to obey our Saviour's command to make disciples of all nations? By the help of God, I will. Almighty God, who has given you the will to undertake all these things, give you also the strength to perform them that he may complete that work which he has begun in you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty, by your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom. Good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial. Good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Good Lord, deliver us. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of them all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the members of the Church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve him in truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, our Archbishop, and for all our bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Guli, chosen to be Bishop of Chelmsford, that she may faithfully fulfill the duties of her ministry, defend the faith, and build up the church in unity and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that it may bring the challenge of the gospel to every corner of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the unity of the church, that there may be one flock and one shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lost and for those who have strayed from the path, 
that they may return to the way of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the sick and the suffering, and for our sisters and brothers who are persecuted for their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Lord, you are merciful and forgive our sins. You hear those who pray in your name of your Son. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may obtain according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together as our Saviour taught us, each in our own preferred language. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. We now commence the legal process by which the election of the new Bishop of Chelmsford is to be confirmed. There are three stages in the appointment of a bishop. The first is the selection. That process involved the Crown Nominations Commission, which, after consultation in the diocese and in the wider province of Canterbury, recommended that the Prime Minister should submit Guli Francis de Carne's name to Her Majesty the Queen for appointment as the Bishop of Chelmsford. The second stage involved the Queen giving permission to the College of Canons of the Cathedral to elect the next Bishop of Chelmsford and recommending to them the person they should elect. The Queen then, by her letters patent, commissions the Archbishop of Canterbury to confirm that election. The third stage is usually the enthronement of the bishop in the cathedral, which marks the effective commencement of the new ministry. The act of confirmation involving the Archbishop of Canterbury reflects the fact that since at least the fourth century, it has been a fundamental principle that confirmation of an episcopal election on behalf of the wider church is necessary. The act of confirmation is legally very important because it confers upon the bishop the 
the spiritual jurisdiction over the diocese by committing to her the care, government and administration of the spirituals of the bishopric. It is, therefore, the confirmation of the election which makes the bishop elect into the bishop of the diocese. The wording used in the process of confirmation has a long history. Before the 18th century, it was in Latin, but in about 1733, an English translation was introduced. Today, a somewhat modernized version is used, which has been adapted to deal with the restrictions that prevent us being together in one physical space. The Archbishop's Vicar General, sitting as a court of law, has to decide whether the procedural steps have been properly carried out so that the election of the new diocesan bishop can be confirmed. There are several stages in the proceedings. First, in accordance with the Appointment of Bishops Act 1533, there is the direction from Her Majesty the Queen to the Archbishop in the form of letters patent requiring him to arrange the confirmation of the bishop's election. Secondly, the advocate will introduce the bishop-elect and the proctor will prove to the court that all the necessary procedures have been complied with and that no objections should be permitted to be heard. Thirdly, the bishop-elect will take the oath of allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen and due obedience to the Archbishop, as required by the canons of the Church of England, and make her declaration of assent. Fourthly and finally, the Vicar-General will read the sentence or decree of the court, confers upon the bishop the spiritual jurisdiction over the diocese. I can confirm that in the unusual circumstances that have prevailed by reason of the coronavirus, the vicars general of both provinces, along with other senior legal officials in the Church of England, have expressed themselves satisfied that in these unique circumstances the use of electronic means is entirely appropriate to fulfil the requirements of the historic legislation. I accordingly invite the bishop-elect to acknowledge her presence and identify on screen now. I am Gulnar Eleanor Francis Dehani, until today, the Bishop of Loughborough. There are a number of documents that are presented to and examined by me. I'm going to ask to confirm that the originals of all the documents to be referred to have been supplied for permanent retention. I do so confirm. With those preliminaries performed, the court will now proceed with the confirmation of election. Right Worshipful Sir, I have the honour of appearing on behalf of the College of Canons of the Cathedral Church of St Mary the Virgin, St Peter and St Sed Chelmsford. My name is Aidan Richard Hargreaves Smith. Right Worshipful Sir, I have the honour of appearing on behalf of the Bishop elect. My name is Oliver Locke. Sir, I respectfully ask that this court shall witness the formal consent of the Bishop elect. You may proceed. Bishop Gulley, I have formally exhibited my proxy of the College of Canons of the Cathedral Church of St. Mary the Virgin, 
St. Peter and St. Said Chelmsford, and have presented to you a certificate of your being elected to be Bishop and Pastor of the See of Chelmsford. And so I now pray that you will be pleased to give your consent to the said election. In the name of God, Amen. Having been named and elected Bishop and Pastor of the Cathedral Church of St Mary the Virgin, St Peter and St Said Chelmsford, and having been requested to accept such election by the College of Canons of the said Cathedral, I, the Right Reverend Gulnar Eleanor Francis de Hani, trusting in the clemency of Almighty God, do accept such election. And I now give my consent in writing to the said election. Sir, there is before you, and I now formally exhibit, my proxy for the College of Canons of the Cathedral Church of St Mary the Virgin, St Peter and St Said Chelmsford, and I make myself a party for them. There are before you the letters patent of our Sovereign Lady the Queen, issued under the great seal of the realm, requiring the confirmation of the election of the Right Reverend Gulnar Eleanor Francis de Khani, presently Bishop of Loughborough, to be Bishop and Pastor of the Cathedral Church of St Mary the Virgin, St Peter and St Said Chelmsford. I pray that a copy of these letters patent, which are before you, may be read. Let the letters patent be read. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of our other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to the Most Reverend, our right trusty and well-beloved Councillor, Justin Portal, by Divine Providence, Lord Archbishop of Canterbury, Primate of all England and Metropolitan, and to all other bishops herein concerned, greeting. Whereas the Episcopal See of Chelmsford being lately vacant by the, the translation of the Archiepiscopal to the Archiepiscopal See of York of the Most Reverend, our right trusty and well-beloved councillor, Stephen Geoffrey Cottrell, Master of Arts, lately Bishop thereof, we have by our letters patent granted to the College of Canons of our Cathedral Church of St. Mary the Virgin, St. Peter and St. Said Chelmsford, our leave and license to choose another bishop and pastor of the said see. And the said College of Canons by virtue of our said leave and license have chosen for themselves and the said see our trusty and well-beloved Gulnar Eleanor Francis de Carney. Master of Arts, Doctor of Philosophy, Bishop Suffragan of Loughborough, to be their Bishop and Pastor, as by their letters, sealed with their seal, directed to us thereupon, does more fully appear. We accepting of such election have given our royal assent thereto, and this we signify unto you by these presents, requiring and commanding you by the faith and allegiance by which you stand bound to us to confirm the said election and to do, perform and execute with diligence, favour and effect all and singular other things which belong to your pastoral office. According to the laws and statutes of England in this behalf made and provided. In witness whereof we have caused these our letters to be made patent Witness ourself at Westminster the first day of March in the 70th year of our reign. I humbly pray that you will be pleased to take upon you the duty of this confirmation. I request you to decree that it be proceeded with according to the form of the said letters patent and in accordance with the law. In obedience to the command of our Sovereign Lady the Queen, we do take upon us the duty of the confirmation of this election. We do decree that it be proceeded with according to the form and effect 
of the said letters patent in the presence of the provincial registrar of the province of Canterbury, a notary public. Sir, it is my privilege to identify and present to you the Right Reverend Gulnar Elena Francis de Fanny as the person elected bishop and pastor of the Cathedral Church of St. Mary the Virgin, St. Peter, and St. Said Chelmsford, and I do here judicially produce her lordship. As proctor for the Cathedral Church of St. Mary the Virgin, St. Peter, and St. Said Chelmsford, there is before you and I formally produce to you as an exhibit the original mandate requiring public notice to be given and stating that anyone wishing to oppose the election should do so at an appointed time and place prior to the date of the confirmation or else would be debarred from pursuing any objection. Endorsed on the mandate is a certificate which verifies that public notice was duly given as required and that no person has appeared in opposition to the confirmation. Full opportunity having been given for opposers to appear, whose objections could be lawfully received, and none having appeared as ordered, we now proceed with the process of confirmation of the election. Sir, I have submitted my summary petition in writing, which I pray to be admitted in court, and that you will decree that I should proceed immediately to prove the matters recited in this petition. We do admit your summary petition, so far as the same may by law be admitted and do decree that you prove the matters recited in your petition immediately. Thank you, sir. In supply of proof of the matters contained in my summary petition, there have been provided for the court the following documents, each of which I have formally exhibited. First, a certificate touching and concerning the election of the Right Reverend Gulna Elena Francis de Cani to be Bishop and Pastor of the Cathedral Church of St. Mary the Virgin, St. Peter and St. Said Chelmsford, made by the College of Canons of the said Cathedral Church and issued under their common seal. Secondly, you saw and heard the Bishop-elect consent to the said election and sign a public instrument containing her said consent as Bishop-elect to the said election. Thirdly, I refer to Her Majesty's letters patent, which have already been read. I submit that all the matters set forth in these exhibits are true and were done as therein described, and I therefore pray that all of them shall be admitted and accepted by the court. We do admit all these documents and accept their validity and the truthfulness of all that is contained in them. The Bishop-elect is ready to take the oaths of allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen and of due obedience to the Archbishop of Canterbury and to make the declaration of assent as required. Let the oaths be taken and the declaration made. I, Golnar Eleanor Francis Dehani, Bishop of Loughborough, elected Bishop of Chelmsford, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. In the name of God, Amen. I, Golnar Eleanor Francis Dehani, chosen Bishop of the Church and See of Chelmsford, do profess and promise all due reverence and obedience to the Archbishop and to the Metropolitical Church of Christ Canterbury and to their successors. So help me God through Jesus Christ. 
The Church of England is part of the one holy, catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Gulnar Eleanor Francis de Hrani, elected Bishop of Chelmsford, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I pray that the court shall now proceed to make an order confirming the election. I have submitted and corrected a definitive sentence or final decree in writing, which I pray to be read and declared. I am satisfied that all has been done that is required to be done for us to confirm this election. In the name of God, Amen. We, Timothy John Bryden, Master of Arts, Master of Law, and Vicar General of the Most Reverend Father in God, Justin Portal, by Divine Providence, Lord Archbishop of Canterbury, Primate of all England, and Metropolitan, being lawfully authorised, to undertake the confirmation of the election of the Right Reverend Gulnar Eleanor Francis de Carney to be Bishop and Pastor of the Cathedral Church of St. Mary the Virgin, St. Peter and St. Said, Chelmsford. And having weighed and considered the matter, with the assistance of the learned in law, do now commit unto the bishop, now elected and confirmed, care, government, and administration of the spirituals of the bishopric of Chelmsford. And we do pronounce decree and order. By this, our definitive sentence or final decree which we make and publish in this matter that the said bishop so elected and confirmed shall be inducted into the real actual and corporal possession of the said bishopric and of all its rights dignities honours privileges and appurtenances whatsoever and be inducted and installed by the Archdeacon of Canterbury or a deputy according to the laudable and approved manner and customs of the said cathedral church which are in compliance with the laws and statutes of the realm. Right Worshipful Sir, the Bishop having now been elected and confirmed, I pray that a public instrument and letters testimonial 
shall be made and issued by the court as a formal record of these proceedings. We do decree as prayed. Bishop of Good Bishop Goody, Bishop of Chelmsford, I trust you've been practicing your signature, uh, your new signature. Congratulations and a very warm welcome. It has been an extraordinary way of nominating a bishop and an extraordinary way of both leaving your past responsibilities and taking on your future ones. Delighted that the Beatitudes were the reading that was set and used for this day. Because as you go into Chelmsford, you will find yourselves, as we all do, in a most extraordinary moment of our history. God willing, we are coming towards the end of the worst of the coronavirus epidemic in this country. That will not be true for many of the places that your uh, new diocese has overseas links with. But in this country, the after effects of what we have gone through are the context of your mission and ministry in the Diocese of Chelmsford. The after effects cover every aspect of human living. They cover those who mourn. And across Chelmsford Diocese, and particularly in those parts of it that are in Northeast London, which are areas of deprivation and suffering, we know that the level of grief and mourning is on a higher level than in many other places for the epidemic killed most cruelly those who were in the poorest and most deprived areas. It will cover the need to comfort, therefore, and to enable your diocese to be a place of comfort. It will co cover those who require mercy, to receive mercy for where they've made errors, where there has been terrible deeds done in the darkness of lockdown. It will require the encouragement of the meek who have been shut in and lost and separated, of the poor in spirit whose spirits have been crushed over the last year. In the Beatitudes, Jesus does not merely promise that God will do certain things. He calls on us to be God's agents in doing them. peacemakers, comforters, those who rejoice and are glad, even when they are reviled and despised. On this at this extraordinary moment, you have been elected and confirmed in election to the See of Chelmsford in a service using technology which permits people from all over the world to take past and they are most welcome. You yourself know what it means to suffer, as does the church in many parts of the world. And therefore you come with a particular 
depth in your own experience. But how can you do this? As you well know, the reading came from the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And it ends with that beautiful par parable of the rock and the sand, the house built on rock and the house built on sand. For you and your family, as together with the rest of the churches in this land and faith communities, but particularly the Church of England, we seek to climb the great mountain that is before us of comfort and leadership, of hope and inspiration, to be carried to the summit and shown to the world. As that happens, it is essential that in your own life, you give most attention to your relationship with God and with those closest to you. For it is there that you will find your deepest and strongest resilience. My prayer for you is that you will know afresh the love that God has for you. That he has not given you this heavier cross to bear of being a diocesan bishop out of some malicious sense of humor but he has given it to you at the same time, promising the strength to bear it if you remain close to him. In this service, we do, there is much in it that is what one might call unusual. It's slightly less unusual than normal, I have to say, in the sense that uh, there's nobody wearing a wig that I can see, or at least if they are wearing a wig, it blends in very well with their hair. <laughs> but apart from that, it has been very, very formal. Do you know the feeling that I remember so well, and I know so well, when you're taking a wedding, and you go through these great promises, which are so beautiful. And you read at the beginning, these great warnings about, you know, not doing this lightly and it's really serious. And if you know any reason why you shouldn't get married, you've got to declare it now and all the rest of it. And you can see the couple sort of looking more and more ashen faced as, as one goes through the service. And then you get to the bit where you can become human again and you can encourage them and bless them and pray with them and lift them up. Well, we've had quite a bit of the rather formal bit. We've had my wittering on in this homily as a slightly less formal bit, but we're now going to go back to the formal bit and the charge. And I'm struck looking at this charge that it still works although much of the research on it was done a long time ago and in very different circumstances. So here we go. To our well-beloved sister in Christ, Gully, now Bishop of Chelmsford, I recall to you God's mission entrusted by Christ to his church to proclaim God's kingdom, to heal the sick and to make disciples of all nations. As the Crown Nominations Commission considered prayerfully and carefully the call of the new Bishop of Chelmsford to share the historic and eternal gospel with a changing world and to encourage all Christians in their witness so that more people become disciples of Jesus Christ, they discerned in a special sense of urgency around tasks and ministries, which are among those I now set before you to guide you as you prepare to take up your new office. As a bishop within the Church of England, you are called to proclaim the narrative of the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to share this with those who have not yet heard it at a time of suffering in many communities. You are to share in the collegial leadership of the Church of England through the House and College of Bishops 
promoting the unity of the church and leading it in its mission of witness and service. And you are to discern the future shape of the institutional and structural life of the church, to live our vocation both locally and nationally. As a diocesan bishop of Chelmsford, you are called to lead the diocese in urgently reimagining its mission to be transformative, evangelistic, and sustainable, leading the implementation of resulting change. You are to equip and motivate all for the demands of ministry in today's society, ensuring a culture in which clergy feel supported and lay people are released into leadership in ministry. You are to celebrate the diversities of Essex and East London, connecting people across boundaries and eliminating systemic barriers to fairness for all with a particular regard to racial justice. You are to enable exploration across theological and doctrinal diversity, creating a culture of dialogue, creativity, fellowship, and a sense of shared purpose in living as the people of God and sharing the gospel. You are to lead the core team at the center of the diocese as they discern the way forward together, building a culture of mutual accountability for delivery and a common sense of purpose and you are to develop good relationships with civic leaders, building coalitions with community partners to tackle issues of social and economic inequality and speaking prophetically into social justice issues, developing the wider capacity of local churches for this too. And I will add, although it was not in the original charge, but has originated since that moment, that you are to lead a group of skilled and experienced and thoughtful bishops and lay people in the Church of England and in your diocese in enabling the church to lead in tackling the great crisis of housing in our land. And through our witness in action, to demonstrate our witness of love and to call people to the hope of the resurrection. Bishop Gully, you have a particular accountability for ensuring that the Diocese of Chelmsford is a safe place for children and adults at risk and that it operates with the safeguarding policies of the Church of England. Gully, as a disciple of our Lord, remember that you are called also to tend to your own spiritual life in prayer and study. So may the Lord of heaven, who gives you the will to undertake these things, give you also the strength to perform them. And by his divine providence, may his holy angels succor and defend you on earth. And may his grace and blessing be with you at all times. Amen. In a moment, I will invite you to give us your blessing as Bishop of Chelmsford. Before that, because the form of dismissal in on a zoom call is slightly informal i want to say some thanks first of all to all those who've taken the time to be present today and to your family especially for their support with you over this period which i know has been remarkable and brave i want to say thank you to John Rees and Sarah Leader for putting together this Zoom version of the confirmation of election. You might say the Church of England meets Gilbert and Sullivan in the oddity of the ceremony, and together we all meet the 21st century. But thank you very much indeed. It's been a challenge. I'd like to thank the legal officers, Tim Bryden, Aidan Hargreaves-Smith and Oliver Locke 
for adapting so nimbly to the Zoom format. And I'd like to thank Georgie Morgan, tragically, uh, sadly, leaving the employment of Lambeth Palace and crossing the river to them on the other side. And Emma Woodhams at Lambeth for silently running the technical aspects as Simon Lewis here behind the scenes. Gully, would you end this with your blessing for us all? Thank you, um, Archbishop Justin. If I may, just a couple of uh, personal and informal words of thanks uh, myself. Um, first of all, to you, Archbishop, thank you very much for your uh, words of encouragement and challenge. Uh, and in particular for your charge, which I will uh, seek to carry out, I hope, uh, humbly and faithfully, and also, um, I hope, with a certain lightness of touch, if that's possible. Thank you also to the Provincial Registrar, to his office, and indeed to everyone who's worked behind the scenes or taken part in the service this afternoon. Um, I'm hugely grateful that you've made this occasion possible. I know that transferring the service uh, to Zoom hasn't been straightforward and has had its challenge challenges, and I'm very grateful to you. I also want to say a particular thanks to colleagues, uh, colleagues old and new, those from Leicester and those from Chelmsford. Uh, inevitably, this is a particularly poignant occasion for me, leaving one place and leaning in towards another, if I can put it like that, uh, and I do so with a deep sense of gratitude in my heart. And finally, I want to say a word of thanks to my family and to my friends who've come along to support and encourage me, and in particular to my nephew, Oliver Locke, who agreed to act as my advocate. Um, it was lovely to see you in action, Oliver, and thank you for being here. And finally, I'm just really sorry that we won't now have the opportunity to mingle informally after the service. But I'm aware that we're all living in the hope of better times for ourselves and for the world. And meanwhile, my thanks to you all. And now in this season of Lent, a final blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.